Okay, Louderback has offered their uh, debugging software free for Portenta users, Arduino Portenta. Um, oops, you go all the way down. Be nice if they had a dedicated page. There it is. You uh, unzip it, and I've already unzipped it. And that file, if I go into there, it's got T32. Um, Notice there's no license 32 here. If I go into bin, if I go into Windows 64, there's that. Okay, I think that's all I need here at the moment. Um, let's load this up. And uh, that's good. We've got there. Linux, there's an extra step you've got to do. Uh, weird situation on my Windows uh, desktop. Uh, my username has a space in it. I hit wouldn't even get to this part or it was the yeah this next part anyway this is your first step just to test things double click there load flash double push that so it's breathing green and do we have success or not this is the big problem do you connect yes this one's going to connect great so it's auto stopping in the setup i typically type go loop because i want to go to the loop and it wants the license key. Now I've pre-downloaded this. I'm going to shrink this. I don't know how safe and whatever it is. Uh, that's weird because now I can't hit tab. Did that work? Save. Okay, so it should give me some nice sensible things saying the license is okay uh let's uh, typically i would refresh but let's just see if go loop now works okay we've into the loop now this is confusing um assembly language but you can just hit this to get back to arduino whatever it's turning lights on blah 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 now uh, this is a super important step because uh, it was hard to install on Linux. There's an extra GT5 um, program you have to install on my uh, Windows machine. I had a space in my username that fried the, the download. Uh, it didn't break anything. It just didn't work. I had to switch to a username that only had one name. Um, that was weird. So if you get here, great. Now, the big important point, though is getting an Arduino to work so uh, your own Arduino code so on my site um, oh, that's not my site on my site here my examples for the Arduino Portenta H7 I have one called my 15 trace.32 if I click raw I can then copy it I put it on here and if I double click, if I make sure I'm on the Portenta M7 core, that's the outer core, uh, I've got to switch to the right com, and I can fire that off while it's doing its thing. This is pretty simple um, stuff. It's got a variable, um, my debug, ooh, I got it on true. I don't actually want it on true, I want it on false. And the reason for that is, uh, at some point, it'd be nice if I learned how to do this without having to do it this way. Uh, if my debug, then debug break. I want it to break there. But let's not do that uh, more advanced one because, and I'll show you the reasoning here, um, I don't want it breaking my program because right now there's nothing flashing here. So I'm going to change this to false, which I think is the default as I download. Let's re-put it on to boot. This is a bit irritating. Redo this. While this one's compiling, here is the fancy little bit of code you can grab from just an Arduino example. If I go to examples and pull down to the... It is right there, thread debug for the Portenta. It's just that. I've changed things a little bit. I've put in no break, and I've put in something that uh, helps with the serial port. Um, okay, so all this thing should do is it's got a, in, um, 
a variable, integer variable that's looping, so we can see that variable. We're setting the LED blue. There it is. It's flashing super fast uh, blue. Uh, high from portenta to the zero port, then it's delaying 100 milliseconds, then, and this is weird with the portenta, low means turn on and high, totally reverse of everything Arduino, and then it's got that if uh, my debug, but I've set that to false now. The reason for that is if I go to now the port, uh, I'm going to go with the 28, uh, trace 32 gives us two ports now, making it thoroughly confusing, um, but there, it's running, it's flashing, everything's good. So, now, if you haven't set your preferences to show compilation and upload, then this next step is going to be a bit confusing. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up and find out where it stored my binary file. It's actually the ELF file I want, but there it is. Notice it's got the binary. I'm going to copy that just for now. And please don't use your mouse because it jumps all over the place. I'm just using the shift key. And I'm going to copy this to a notepad. Uh, I think I've got one that's going to blank out the whole screen. And copy that. Notice this bin I'm going to change to elf. Uh, it has more information on it. And I'm going to go back to my trace32. Now, no idea the proper way of doing this. Uh, there's all kinds of information about scripts and all kinds of confusing stuff. I'm just hacking my way through the world here. If I click now, here's one thing really irritating. If I put the thing there and then click file, it totally forgets it and goes back to the default. So I'm going to put it there. Actually, I'm going to go back a bit. I, I probably could put it there. Um, just hit enter. There's the ELF file I want to load. Now here's totally confusing. This is still there. I was told I had to double click that. You don't. Now another thing, I'm not flashing the program because it's already on there. In fact, this way of doing it, I can't flash the program because it's still looking for this thread debug. But everything should be okay. If I go like that, yeah, reset it. The nice thing with resetting is it um, resets the variables. I don't really have to do that. So, do we have success? See, it's, it's actually trying to find the wrong program, but let's see. Come on, machine. I'm running a whole bunch of video stuff. It has slowed it down just a little bit. I might pause because that's longer than I was like, ah, pause. Oh, that stuff. Did that pause? Okay, so once you've got it, it says you are all right and you're supposed to reload and whatever. Uh, let's just see what we've got going here. Go loop. And there we are in the loop. Remember F9 or this little box right here gets us back to our Arduino code. This is pretty awesome. Now, uh, one thing I've learned is you can arrange these windows a little bit better. I've got my video here, which is irritating. Uh, one window I really like is the show watch. And if I type in my, uh, what's it called? My loop, loop, it then watches the loop. And we've done, theoretically, we've done 151 of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a little breakpoint right here. And now I'm going to hit go and see my loop went up to 152. If you watch the uh, portenta, it flashed. If you go to your this thing and you can always clear that thing out. Let's hit go again and hi and bye because it flew through this. Yay. Um, now, uh, it'd be nice if... Um, If Louderback showed me some way to run debug break uh, so my serial monitor on Arduino works. But at the moment, I have to do this little trick. Um, so I set a Boolean to be my debug. Now I'm on my debug. I hit that. I throw it. And here's the problem with this is now my Arduino code doesn't work. But 
it's a little smoother getting into um, uh, Trace32. So Trace32, incredible debugging. You can go in, you can look at the assembly language. Um, let me just show you what's going on here. And I don't think that ran. Oh, you know why? I didn't switch to the correct port. Uh, that is the blinking port. Not blinking port. There we go. Uh, the Portenta has a dual core. And so this whole port thing um, and making sure you're putting your program on the correct core is a bit confusing. And that's probably why it's pro. This is for people who are professional with uh, these machines. I'm trying to let the 31 million Arduino users uh, maybe move towards the Portenta if they want, because it's got some pretty cool machine learning stuff. OK, so that now ran properly. But here's the problem is um, if I go to the correct port, uh, one is for the GDB, one is for the serial monitor. Because it's not running, right? Because I use the, uh, the debug brake. OK, so let's go. Let's copy this. This time, let's just copy the whole uh, ELF file. Let's run this let's go remember this is not how you're supposed to do it this is just my hacky way of doing it uh, i'm just going to load that up um, eventually it'll ask me to click reset so i did and let's see if it doesn't crash this time and by the way i'm running uh, video recording software um, that's pretty hard on my little lot. No, it didn't crash. But what's nice here, let's get rid of all this assembly language. But assembly language is the cool stuff. That's and and it has a whole bunch of assembly language just for the portenta. So here's my code, and this is what was really nice with that debug working, is now I can just hit go. And oh my goodness. Okay, so what happened there? Let's just click go. And you see, hi, by Portenta. Um, if we're doing the Windows, and I just don't have enough screen space here. Uh, what happened there? I was thinking my watch would come up. Uh, by the way, with these windows, oh, there's my watch. Once again, we can hit my loop. Uh, I should have finished the spelling of that. And there, and now we can do this and because of that debug in there I can just right away go through these I can check stuff there's a million things you can do here super advanced it's great now one little trick at the moment because uh, it uses a start.cmm file and a win.cmm file if you arrange your screen properly please take this little hint um, save it as a win file dot cmm file but put it somewhere where it's easy to find again like um why is that uh i would put it in my bin windows 64 okay and you can call them whatever you want uh i'm gonna call this win uh one and then you can always just find it back. There's there's this there's a scripting stuff you can do, but because the start script has some stuff with the Windows uh, positions, it's really confusing. So that's by far the easier way. You just load up. Um, you you load from. Uh, you see, it's in thread debug again. Um, you load up, and then all your windows are in the right spot. Anyway, uh, this works. I'm not doing it the proper way. Hopefully, there's some good instructions on how to do it the proper way. There is. Um, Arduino Pro has a tutorial that you can fly through. It explains some of the stuff about um, uh, Linux, but basically, uh, better work with the registration key than I did. Um, by the way, it should save it. The registration key was not the problem today. For some reason, it didn't save it very well. Um, 
But yeah, installing the program and getting it running, and those were the problems. I would really like to figure out how to get this debug running without doing this if my debug, so I can run the my Arduino program, then load up Trace and have debug uh, set breakpoint uh, where I want them. So then I can look through it. You could have several of these. Anyway, have a good day.